Oh, it is a beautiful day in this world of ours. For many, many reasons. Not only is spring finally upon us, there is no longer the cancerous tumor in the heart of the Raider Nation known as Carson Palmer. Today, he was officially cut going to the Arizona Cardinals. Things are looking kind of up for the Raiders. Well, kind of. Um, before we begin, let me start by saying something. I've been a diehard Raiders fan my entire life. Uh, since the days of Tecmo Super Bowl and Bo Jackson and Marcus Allen, I've just been diehard committed to the silver and black. Some of my all-time favorite moments of my childhood involved the Raiders. It involves watching Rich Gannon and Jerry Rice and Charlie Garner and all the really great underrated players which uh, you know, ended up going to the Super Bowl in 2003. Which was the last time the Raiders were really any good by any considerable stretch. And the last time they were actually worth uh, you know, considering to be an actual NFL team. For the last decade, that's 10 years, 10 solid years, the Raiders have been absolutely abysmal and at the absolute best, just mediocre. And every year I kept saying to myself, this is the year where things turn around. Things turn around and the absolute best thing that has happened to us over the last 10 years, that's one-tenth of a century, was going 8-8 uh, eight and eight in the consecutive seasons. We haven't posted a winning record since before the Iraq War started. This is a team that is the definition of futility. We are worse structurally than the Lions. We are worse structurally than the Browns or any of the other really bad teams in the league. I think we're even structurally worse than the Buffalo Bills. This is a team where you don't know the definition of pain as a sports fan unless you're an Oakland Raiders fan. And uh, going into the 2013 season, I am mildly, cautiously optimistic about the chances of the team turning things around and mildly improving. God knows it can't be worse than they were last year. But to kind of give you a preview of the team, one thing you're doing the draft this year, I also want to make a video which kind of explains the problems of the Oakland Raiders as an NFL team. You know, their structural problems, their organizational difficulties, and basically outline the five reasons why the Raiders have just been absolutely atrocious as a team for such a long period of time. So that's why the video is called, Why Do the Oakland Raiders Suck So Much? I'm not saying that I hate them or dislike them, it's just a fact. And I say that as a hardcore fan of the team, they suck. And unless they remedy these five things, they're going to continue to suck indefinitely. All right, so going into the 2013 season, uh, as far as offensive and defensive stats goes, really nothing to write home about. The only thing that looks even remotely uh, optimistic is the team did place eighth in the league as far as passing yards per game, which really is sort of a... Uh, it's a kind of an inconvenient stat because it doesn't really kind of explain how many of those uh, yards were turned into you know, actual touchdowns because there weren't a whole lot. In fact, the Raiders were 26th in offensive scoring uh, in the league last year, and the defense it was actually even worse. We were 28th in the league, allowing 27.7 points per game. Uh, other defensive stats, just really mediocre across the field. Uh, 20th in pass defense. Really, the absolute worst statistic you can say about the Raiders in 2012 was, oddly enough, their rushing. They were putting up 88.8 .8 yards per game, 28th in the league. Considering you know, the best players, the halfback, that's pretty, pretty crappy. So anyway, 2013 in a glance, tons of stuff has happened in the offseason. Obviously, the big news is Carson Palmer, long gone. So that's one of the biggest problems of the organization. Maybe, maybe we're on the path to rectifying one of the biggest woes the team has had for the last 10 years, more on that later. Tons of free agency losses. Mike Godson, gone. Darius Haber Bay, gone. Brandon Myers, gone. Michael Huff, gone. Shane Leckler, gone. The punter, who's been one of the few uh, promising spots you can say about the team for the last decade, out of here. So the Marquette King era is officially on. So looking at the Raiders need to go in the draft, obviously the O-line is a big problem. The Raiders more than likely end up using their third pick overall to pick up a right tackle, um, but you never know if things could happen. They also have a lot of problems on the O-line, uh, just in general, but also the D-line and their cornerbacks. So really, you know, you can kind of go either way, which one is the most uh, pressing, urgent need. 
off of the team just immediately. So that's pretty much what you need to look at going to the draft. So why do the Oakland Raiders suck so much? Why have they been playing horribly? Why have they been unable to mount anything that resembles a resurgence as a decent football organization? Well, there are five reasons. And reason number one, which is not the most important reason, but it's the first reason we're going to talk about, is that they just have not been able to establish a steady run game. Uh, this is a team that has one of the best all-around running backs in the league in Darren McFadden. He is a fantastic player, obviously the greatest offensive asset of the team, but the problem is he keeps getting hurt. The dude hasn't played a single season for the Raiders since he was uh, joining the team. He's only played, the most he's ever played in one season was 13 games. So obviously there is a big, big hole in the run game for the Raiders. Now I think that's been solved somewhat with the addition of Jameez Alali from the Cowboys who came over. And the full bags of the Raiders really aren't bad. You got Marcel Reese. And I think with him and Lowley, you kind of have a really good halfback, fullback tandem. So I think the run game will be mildly improved, but there is still a dire need for a good backup for Darren McFadden. Uh, maybe that means they'll go for perhaps a running back late in the draft. You might go with Stephon Taylor from uh, Stanford. You might get a little C from Florida. You have those two kids in Arkansas, Dennis Johnson and Neil Davis. And Neil Davis, if you don't know this guy, he's that huge, huge running back out of Arkansas. He's about 240 pounds. I think he'd be a pretty good fit for the team. Be a good you know, tandem player with Darren McFadden. So the Raiders almost certainly need to recruit a more robust uh, running back squad than what they have now if they want to be successful. But even if they directly implement that, that's not really the problem. The problem is the West Coast offense. It's a team that is running a, uh, a system designed for a rich Gannon when their quarterback is Carson Palmer. It doesn't work that way. They can't do uh, the long game. They don't have uh, an offensive line, really, that will allow a quarterback to have time in the pocket to actually get that done. So I think considering their uh, offensive scheme, their best assets, which are their running backs right now, and until they get a consistent quarterback, more on that later, I think the best thing they can do for the time being is set up a run-and-gun offense. Until they find a way to switch up that offensive scheme, get a steady uh, running back squad set up, and then transition to a solid run game, the Raiders really won't be worth a hoot for the foreseeable future. Which brings me to problem number two, a defense, because the Raiders' defense is just crap. Uh, this is a team that requires a complete restructuring of the entire defensive uh, layout. Uh, I think maybe, you know, looking at the defensive line, that might be their biggest weakness. As bad as their O-line is, just the way the defensive line was gutted in free agency this year, I think it might actually be even a weaker spot overall compared to the O-line. But, I mean, clearly, you know, when Lamar Houston is your best player, you know things are looking bad on the D-line. Uh, so, in the first round, you know, they might end up going to the defensive tackle. You might have... Sharif Floyd maybe come in as a first or second overall draft pick for the Raiders this year, but we'll see about that. Linebackers, you know, they're pretty lackluster, but I don't think they're as pressing a need as what they have on the O-line and D-line. The question now is, you know, are the Raiders a team that are actually going to go for Mante Teo? I don't know. It seems like a Raiders-type decision, but since we have the new management in, you never know. Uh, cornerbacks, a huge problem. You know, the days of Charles Woodson and, you know, Asamaga shutting it down, they're long gone, folks. What we're dealing now with is a uh, system in which Tawan Jones, Tawan Jones, a dude drafted as a running back, will likely be a starting cornerback for the Raiders this year. That's how bad the cornerbacks are for the Raiders. Um, as far as safeties, you know, they're all right. Uh, Tavon Branch is a pretty good player. Uh, but, you know, the defensive needs, they're just way too pressing. If the Raiders don't go for a guy like D. Milliner out of Alabama or maybe an Xavier Rhodes out of Florida State or maybe even a Jordan Poyer from Oregon State, I would be extremely surprised heading into this year's draft. The third need, and I'm happy to say this might be the one we've actually finally begun to remedy as a team. So we might have a one out of five urgent needs uh, finally addressed by this team. And that is, why have we sucked for so long? Well, it's pretty simple. We've lacked a franchise quarterback. Uh, over the last couple of years, you know, look at who we've had playing behind center. You've had guys like Kerry Collins, busted up. You've had guys like past their prime, Dante Culpepper, uh, past his prime, 
Aaron Brooks. Uh, you have the Jason Campbell failure. You have the Carson Palmer failure. The sad thing is, we think about it, the absolute best quarterback the Raiders have had on their squad since um, the Rich Gannon years was Bruce Gratikowski, a backup quarterback who I thought really could have been a whole lot better and more implemented and definitely would have resulted in a whole lot better play than what we saw out of Carson Palmer and Jason Campbell. But things didn't come about. Hugh Jackson left. Tom Cable out. He gets shifted. And I think that was a huge mistake on the half of the organization, but we're beyond that. So now we're finding ourselves in a very strange position where I'm actually optimistic about Oakland Raiders quarterbacking heading the 2013 season. Because you have the dual threat. You've got uh, Matt Flynn and you got Terrell Pryor. Okay, Terrell Pryor, yeah, he's an unproven prospect. And I think a lot of the uh, criticism he gets as being Cam Newton a lot is probably accurate. But I think he really could have done a worse job behind center than what Carson Palmer did last year. And that just goes without saying. Matt Flynn, you know, how ironic is it that here we are six years after Jamarcus Russell got uh, drafted and the Raiders are now going to the guy that was his backup to be their franchise savior? That's not hilarious or anything. Uh, Matt Flynn, he's kind of unproven, but I keep going back to that one game he had when he was the quarterback for the Packers. Uh, where he just destroyed the Detroit Lions. I think Matt Flynn, he's going to be a pretty good quarterback for us. I think he's going to win you know, at least six games. He's going to play a whole lot better than Carson Palmer did under pretty much the same offensive line. Actually, a worse offensive line, probably. So I don't think either one are going to be true standout, next rich game kind of guys, but I think they're definitely going to get some wins. So we're going to be able to actually surmount perhaps a uh, – a winning season in about two or three years with these guys. Well, you kind of keep building up before you get to a, a solid perennial player. And uh, Jamarcus Russell, you don't know what it's like to be a tortured fan when you can say Jamarcus Russell was your quarterback. We, I'm still in therapy about that, actually. Reason number four why the Raiders have sucked for so long, and this one kind of goes without saying, you at the head coaching carousel. Dennis Allen, I'm sorry, but he's not the answer. I think it's really crazy that you had Tom Cable and Hugh Jackson, two guys that came in here using pretty similar schemes, go 8-8, eight and eight, which is far better than any other coaches have done for the squad over the last decade. And uh, they go 8-8 eight and eight both seasons, and they get canned. So you get Dennis Allen come in, youngest coach in uh, NFL history, I do believe. Goes 4-12, uh, and 12, keeps the job. You know why? Because nobody knows. So anyway, you know, I think Dennis Allen, he's probably going to get canned before the season is over. Well, hopefully not. I hope the Raiders actually, you know, put up a winning percentage this year and look halfway decent. But I just don't see Dennis Allen lasting uh, much more than, you know, a year or two. So you can add him to the list of uh, esteemed head coaches like Bill Callahan and Lane Kiffin and Art Schill and Norv Turner on the uh, endless carousel of Oakland Raiders coaches. And in fact, I think there actually is a guy out there who I think would be a perfect fit for the new look Raiders when you have the run and gun set up, and that's Lovey Smith, a guy who did miraculous things for the Chicago Bears, took him to a Super Bowl. And think about this, folks. This is a guy who commandeered a team that went 10 and 6. 10 and 6. The Raiders have not gone 10 and 6 since when? Like before the Patriot Act was enacted. That is is just absurd and he loses a job and he's currently unemployed and Dennis Allen isn't so I think until you get the head coaching thing resolved we'll see and finally the primary reason why the Oakland Raiders suck as an organization and they have sucked for 10 years and will continue to suck indefinitely until it's remedied it's a lack of executive leadership you know Al Davis he was a great guy God rest his soul but he was kind of not in his right mind, you know, when he was running the Raiders from, uh, let's see, like 1986 up until 2011. And uh, I think Mark Davis is a guy who should not even be allowed to watch professional football, let alone own a professional football team in the United States. And I think until you see the Davis family relinquish control of the Raiders, they're just not going to be competitive. They just don't have the financial assets. They don't have uh, the corporate structure. They just don't have the wherewithal to establish a, uh, a team that's comparable to perhaps the Patriots 
or the Ravens or even the 49ers. There's not going to be structured from the ground up to be a winning team anytime soon. Now, I think the guy you're looking at right now is general manager Reggie McKenzie. He's a guy from the Packers. And basically what he's doing, he's basically turning the, the Raiders into the uh, Green Bay Raiders or the Oakland Packers. That's exactly the system he's using. He's trying to basically do what the Packers did, bringing in Brett Favre and trying to set up a solid D and getting uh, not great but consistent running backs in and trying to build that unit. And it worked in Green Bay, and I mean, really can't complain. There have been a winning team since, you know, the mid-1990s. But I just don't think that fit's going to work because the rest of the structure of the team, um, it's just not there. This is an absolutely horribly aligned team as far as management goes. It's just ridiculous. I think if you want to look at a team that went from being absolutely lackluster to being on the brink of being a championship squad, I think you need to look at the Atlanta Falcons model. This is a team that was just uh, crappy, crappy, crappy for years and years. They're owned by the Smith family. In comes Arthur Blank, this dude that really wants an NFL team that's really hungry, that's got money, that's willing to go out there and you know take personal losses and just throw around a bunch of uh, dollars to get what he needs. And I think the facts speak for themselves. You know, Arthur Blank comes in in 2002. Ten years later, the Falcons are a Super Bowl contender. They are a team that, uh, up until he came along, never won more than uh, two winning seasons back-to-back, -back, and now they're a perennial playoff contender. And I think that's because of the structure. You had Arthur Blank come in. You had guys like Tom Dimitrov come in, Rich McKay, Mike Smith. So you have that four-headed uh, hydra there to ensure this is going to be a team that's going to win and win for a long time to come. You don't have that sort of uh, management with the Oakland Raiders. In fact, kind of give you an idea of just how uh, – messed up the Raiders are as a managed squad. They don't even actually have a president. There's nobody in the Raiders organization called president. It's just not there. This is a team that's organization is just absolutely laughable. Until they get remedied, forget it. No good can come out of it. It doesn't matter if they have, you know, the best quarterbacks, the best run game, an improved defense, a great head coach. It doesn't matter because you have to have excellent management. This is a top-down change. Unless you're great at the top, playing on the field is going to continue to be lackluster. So anyway, 2013, I think this is kind of the changing of the guard for the Oakland Raiders. Uh, clearly, uh, the lease on Oakland Coliseum runs out at the end of the year, and I think that after that, they're probably going to be paying rent at uh, the Santa Clara Stadium for a couple of years. Whether they're going to become like a long-term B team for uh, the new 49er Stadium, that is a potentiality. I also think, and this is probably more uh, optimistic if you're a Raiders fan, is that, you know, in about 10 years' time, they're going to be playing in Los Angeles. You know, you got to think there's got to be some, you know, multi-billion company that just wants to buy this team and implement that, uh, that Arthur Blanks-esque leadership. I mean, come on, look at, all the, look at all the companies in California that are, you know, multi-billion conglomerates that can just buy this team and basically do what the Kraft family did to the Patriots and make this a perennial winner. I mean, Chevron doesn't want an NFL team. McKesson doesn't want an NFL team. I mean, what about Apple or Google? Don't they want to get in on the NFL thing? I think that would be a perfect opportunity for them to enter the market and become a, uh, a vessel for change for the silver and black. Or maybe we can get some foreign investors. You know, those guys out in Saudi Arabia. I'm sure they'd love to have an NFL team, you know, like the Jaguars owner, uh, Oreo, or whatever he's called. So anyway, that's why the Raiders suck. Uh, horrible leadership, no head coach, uh, lack of a franchise quarterback, which might be remedied this year, thankfully. Uh, horrible defense and a really, really uh, underwhelming run game. So with all that said, I am optimistic, You know, as I said before. I think for the first time really in a while, and by a while I mean like two years, I think the Raiders are on the brink of a quasi-revolution. I think they're going to win more games than they did last year. I think bare minimum about 6-10. and 10. But I don't think it's possible for them to go higher than 9-7. and seven. they got a lot of really tough uh, games coming up this year. you got the Broncos. you got uh, the Chiefs will be a much better team this year. But really, that's kind of impossible for them to not be. But the interconference schedule, I think, is pretty difficult. That said, you got Matt Flynn. you got Terrell Pryor. You're running basically the same scheme, so who knows. But... Um, yeah, you never know. You got to keep uh, keep your chin up, and hey, if absolutely nothing else, no more Carson, folks.
That's sign enough that we got a great future ahead of us.